let's, uh, let's take a look at FPS, radar, and Pi 1. So you can see here, this is in Asiado, which we've already showcased. Uh, this is obviously going in and utilizing some of our new building box UI for the doors. And then here's a scan wave, and you can see that, that I'm looking at that data pad, and then it, you can move around, and it's giving me that information. So right now, it's just giving you the basic high-level information in terms of the names and things. Uh, but you will also have more detailed information depending on, you know, contextually what the item is. And what you're seeing here is part of the player interaction system. So you can just, even though that's kind of, of a complex area, there's lots of little things that you can interact with. But you're getting confidence of, oh, cool, I can, I can grab that or I can use the data pad. And you, you're not having to go into interact mode. You're not having to be driven by the cursor. You can go in and just press F or interact with it. And, you know, you've probably seen this in plenty of AAA games, but they don't have the detail and at scale that we do. So we wanted to make sure that that system is really robust. But hopefully, it, it gives you kind of yeah. an idea of. And, I, and I'd also for. say that, like, part of the idea is that, that you know, there's the you know there's the default action, which in this case is what you see when you're on it when it says grab or uh, or you know I think there's a few other ones that you can be using default action. But the icon, the, the well, I, well I'd, I'd roll the uh, yeah. clip that yeah. we have and we can... Let's roll them over glasses, take a look. So the first page that you'll see that's coming up right now is kind of like the overview. So, you know, it's the overview of your player, it's the overview of your ship, and then it's like your primary objective. So, and, and all of these uh, widgets that we call them are kind of shortcuts to the kind of the main you focus can areas. See alerts as you go to the other yeah. page, so... So you can see here we've got your messages. So this is kind of like uh, the email client. And then on the right, we've got kind of like the ship chat that's coming in with you know, general ship chat from the AI, which again, it's kind of just making it believe that you're in this you know, believable environment or a real life environment rather than just you alone. Uh, so responsive compared to the old one. Yeah, and it's just a lot, it's a lot cleaner. And uh, you know, the information, it's something that we've tried to be consistent across the HUD and the MOBI is that we want to make sure that we're giving you clean information. And you can see here. like the alerts. So the alerts are now cleared from the, the messaging app because we've see, read the messages, so it's gone. But there was an alert down on our mission side here. But now we've gone and looked at it, it's cleared. So that's the system. It's a framework. So like inside the, you know, you'll get you know, notifications or alerts. Oh, look, I got a new message over here. I'll click over to it. Now we're back. Um, and the biggest thing as well is in, engine. in the engine, in the UI, that uh, will essentially become your minimap. But you'll have a, a more sort of you know, reduced version with you in the middle as you're moving around. But yep. if we run it, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see kind of what the, the tech is. So first, this is in the editor. Um, uh, but it's essentially what it does is it's taking our existing um, layouts, levels, ships, so we don't have to build this custom, but it's a way of applying certain shaders and marking up certain objects to be displayed, like the floor gets displayed, but the walls don't. Uh, so we can just take the existing geometry you already have streamed in that you're walking around already, uh, and then use it to be rendered for our minimap. So this is, this is essentially in the engine using the Idris uh, ship itself and the various parts of, it, of its interior to create the minimap without any special. This, you know, this doesn't have any specific custom like UI art for it, other than some of the like level things that say, you know, uh, you know, ground level or whatever. It's it's one of the advantages of having high yeah. detailed ships yeah. because yeah. the environment's already, you know, already in a good state to show straight out of the gate. And so the idea of this being systemic is that you know when it's in the, the feature and the is ready to go, ready for prime time, everything, it, we can just apply it to space station. Yeah, because a lot of zones. traditional game development, you have to make custom minimaps. Yeah. So you look at the environment and you go, we have to make a custom environment minimap. So you know, if we want to support lots, tens, hundreds, and thousands of locations, yeah. especially for the PU, we, and we absolutely to, for yeah. the PU, it's just it's just not viable. So we wanted to come up with a solution that we can use you know, with minimal effort on the side of uh, content creation, but gives us all of the information that we want. And this minimap is not just, uh, oh, that's where I am. It can show you objectives. It can show you other people. It can show you information about those things. And again, it's all underpinned by the radar and scanner. So when we call it the minimap, it's just, this is just a, a, a kind of how you view your radar information in FPS. And your radar and scanner gives you so much more information than just, oh, that's the name of the door. It tells you what's the state. Does it have power? 
can I hack it? You know, if it's a person, what is, what's their active status? Are they injured? So if you're coming into here and going, I'm trying to do a medical mission, and I've got a marker, I can go, cool, I can get a scan of the lo local lie of the area and go, right, yeah. this person's injured. Oh, the, his body's injured too. Oh, he's got a tier one injury. I'm going to go and help him before he bleeds out because I can see his health. And, and you'll be able to see that via this information. Yeah, it allows you to detect you know, uh, saboteurs or intruders, Absolutely. but then you know, using like the relay network and whatever the saboteurs and intruders can start pulling people. Take a look at the EVA <laughs> video, uh, see what we're looking at here. Well, and as Chris says, in terms of, you know, here we go the, the, the EVA, this is what you're seeing here is that you'll probably see some of it in the third person, the thrusters are not um, firing because yeah, it's, the, it's, it's the, decoupled. the old VFX, uh, yeah. but it's also the old VFX code. So we haven't part of the proper, this is the, a current PU suit versus what we'll have as a new one with a proper like pack that has the thrusters in the right position and when you go forward the thrusters going from the back. So what you're actually seeing here is you've, you've actually connected to this surface. So now it's almost like you're in a prone situation but this is going to be what more, more our new prone will be. Again you've got full 360 degrees, you can just move your mouse and you look all the way behind and, you or all the way in front. And right now we're moving along here not because we're thrusting, because we're using our hands exactly. to move ourselves along and we're looking around as we're doing that. If we went out to the third person here, you would sort of see us moving our hands around. I think we'll see it a little later on. There we go, here we go. So we're just sort of pulling ourselves along. And if we wanted to at this point, we could stop and we could push off against it and then we would just go floating out into space. So that's the sort of idea of what we call push-pull. Push um, and so what and you're so seeing he here, just, yeah, he just yeah. pushed wow. himself off. So what you're seeing here, that that's actually um, kind of you're just floating alongside the actual um, this fin of this uh, Asiata station, and this is actually keeping you in this orbit. And then if you did, and that's just you just push forward and go, wow. where you can actually jump off into space. But then this becomes one of the if you look at physical traversal where you've got jumping and mantling and vaulting, this is where we have zero g push pull. We have the tractor beam that kind of pulls you around an EVA, and then we have your EVA pack, which is limited by your resource of EVA fuel. So this allows you to kind of manipulate and, and go in EVA, and allows us as developers to build EVA traversal spaces, both wide ranging and both small scale. So yeah, here's, here's I mean, we were before in first person looking around, but here's us cutting out the third person to actually show you what your, your character and body's doing. And so there's a lot of, I mean, and these are still, block out animations actually, but so there'll be a lot more like nuance or, or fidelity to it. But yeah, you have you have a lot more um, control, uh, you know, directional sense, uh, ability to look around, ability to stop yourself. Uh, so I think, you know, in this one, we're gonna come up close to the glass above it. Yes. And you're actually gonna see us like, if you fly into something, you sort of arrest, just, again, block out animation, but you're gonna, as we get down close to it, I think we're going to come down. You'll see uh, as uh, uh, our character comes down here, our player comes down here, yep, uh, put our hands out to brace ourselves to stop ourselves on the glass here. Uh, so all of that's like systemic. It's, that's, not, that's not marked up or anything. It's all ray casting, seeing of things. You brace yourself when you come up against, hold on, arrest your thing. You can push off against things. So we've spent a fair amount of time in engineering on all this. But it, it's not just for squadron. It's going to be, you know, it's obviously useful in some of the environments of the squadron. This is one of them, obviously, the acid out of space. And you're going to look down on the slavers that you saw in the earlier scan. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the quantum boost clip that we have uh, so we can see it one more time here. So just to call out, that's going to be the old HUD. Yeah, that, yeah, that is the old HUD. That's too busy. Right, that's so. the next old HUD. <laughs> yeah. Earlier yeah. we were showing the old, old, old HUD. So we've done a scan here. Those are, that's also the old yeah. point of interest because the point of interest will be just points. Yeah. But basically we've done a scan. We've got some points of interest that are uh, you know, multiple 10Ks away. And you can see the distance there. It says 13,000 kilometers on the right-hand side. So this is obviously just placeholder yeah. UI for the quantum boost. And we, again, you can just boost over there. And it obviously has this interactive gameplay, which obviously went into. Uh, yeah, and this, by the way, is that, that's all programmer work in progress from Yogi uh, on uh, the quantum boost um, mechanism because you're just going to have to stay in the zone to keep in boost, otherwise, you'll fall out of boost. Uh, but we've gone over to the, the, the planet here. So, what it's allowing you to do is sort of have that mid level traversal and 
investigate things uh, without having to, uh, you know, spend forever. Let's play the video. So, see the video. Let's see the video there. And you, we, we've you hyped this up now. Hover trial is yeah. the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. Here we go. So you can see here, this is actually a, um, slaver, a, cra pod. a slaver pod. So It yeah. closes down. It's on the floor. We're going to activate it. Lever takes up now. Grab Lev's arm. You get hold of it. Bam. And by the way, our new, the new interaction system's not working yes. in, in this demo here. It's a separate build. But we're, you know, as you can see, it's getting pushed over. Bulkheads. Bulkheads. But this is essentially a, a really big improvement for us because we want, you know, we want physical cargo, and we, we, we want physical cargo to be a really a big deal in the PU that you have to move that cargo, you have to make decisions on how long it's going to take you to load it up, not just buy it from a kiosk and it appear in your ship. So and this gives us the ability to do that, and like Chris says, move much larger things than what you'd normally be able to push as a human being. Yeah, I mean, this happens to be just the. A slaver pod, but you know, obviously you'd be pushing. Uh, you know, as long as it's grab lever equipped and has the sort of hover device, then uh, you, you know, like I said, you could have large uh, shipping containers and stuff like that. And this is all underpinned by our grav leg technology. So the same, you know, if it, as a dragonfly, or eventually you'll be hopefully be able to move much larger ships if you need to rearrange them, or yeah. you know, when you're moving things around uh, on your homestead or whatever, whatever we do eventually. And I've actually, we've actually had this working on a planet. So you can just push this over planet terrain. You don't let go. You stay stable. Because uh, it, it doesn't actually undulate uh, unless, there's, unless there's something actually physically touching it. So it allows it to be much more stable. And what we want to do for your uh, cargo loading is that we'll use a system similar to the cargo grid that you'll be able to snap things on top of it. So when you, if you have a flat platform, you'll be able to snap cargo boxes onto it so they won't fall off. And then you'll be able to you know, reliably move them without frustration. And again, you can see some of our design ethos coming through is that we're trying to remove the barrier to entry. We're trying to remove the, the control mechanism, the things that frustrate you as you play the game and kind of make that a lot simpler. I see this and all I can think about so is spot. We should yeah, let's, run the let's video show. if we can. All right, uh, ladders. So obviously this, as you can see, this is final art. This, absolutely. So this is great. taken directly from Squadron 42. No, it's obviously a test map. But you can see here that, as Chris said, it, it, the, the, you know, the level of inertia is, is still block out phase, but you can see that we're actually starting to get that you can grab on, you can go straight into a mantle or a vault, you can go straight into the pull-ups. And the thing is that what you're seeing here is, you know, while this is just an test map, a lot of these are providing design ethos to then feed into the PU. So if we've got derelicts and we've got environments that we want the player to go and do missions in, we don't just necessarily just have to lie on, you've only got jump. Well, you only can do vault and mantle. And right there, we did, a, we did a jump onto halfway onto a ladder. And here we're looking around to the left, to the right. Yeah, and you can jump off the ladder at any point. You can slide down it. You can do all sorts of things. Wow. We've got a bit, bit of a sneak peek at the end. Yeah, so. We're going to fight an alligator? <laughs> the boss, the true boss. And we jump across to get on the ladder there. And again, these are all the block out animations. Uh, and uh, oh, I wonder what that is. What Someone is that? accidentally put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But the other thing as Back well. Back to our spaceship. Yeah. I mean, the other thing to say about uh, about the traversal is while we're highlighting. And so that was on a test map. But yes. We do have an example of it working. Yep. So I'll roll map. Let's, roll let's, the clip. let's uh, take a look at the, the real deal. So here's in Asiado in the decommissioned area. Okay. You can see the two AI in the, in the distance catch you. And then this is kind of just a representation of, of it doing the same thing in a real environment. But obviously, we wanted to show you the kind of the, the thing behind the curtain. What are they actually doing? They're checking cover points. They're checking the usables that are there. And then, you know, in some, a lot of the cases when we actually captured this video, uh, if we actually failed because they pincered the player and they actually found you before we were able to show you, you know, what was happening. So it's, uh, it, it's really good to see how this transition from social into combat so that you can actually play through the game. Better check that out. So here he's checking a, a, a usable which we've set up, we're just kind of like looking and checking, okay, is there anything there? 
nothing there. And again, he's sharing that information with his buddy. So if you've got two, three, four AI that are searching, then obviously they're sharing and talking to each other and letting them know that nobody's found you. You, you may not be able to see them, but you're going to know they're out there looking for you. And if you, if you stay in the same place for too long, they will find you. Yeah, so you can see the, the one in the background is actually looking over one of the vents, one of the railings, should I say, and then I think the uh, Ross, who did all, captured all these videos, I think he takes a bit of revenge. And again, not scripted. The, 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 it's systemic. They understand all the hiding places. They, they, this is their station. They understand the hiding places. They understand where to look, and they just go through. Some, uh, yeah, so you can drop these enemies in any environment, and it will, they will play out like this. But obviously, what they, the choices that they make at runtime will be different. Wow. And this is where you know, we have to make sure that the AI that we're working on, even though we're working on it in Squadron, it has to work for the entirety of Star Citizen in all the different environments, in all the different scenarios that you're put in. So it's, right. uh, it's, so a, it's a major improvement. So that's hiding from the AI, but let's look at some of the combat tactics sure. now. So uh, let's do combat tactics one. So again, what you're seeing here is in a test map. We wanted to just kind of show you a bird's eye view. So we've just turned God mode on so you can see it. And you can see the labels here. So we've got the defenders that kind of push to cover points. Then we've got the, the pusher who's kind of pushing towards you. And then we've got the strafer who is kind of like taking more of a wider angle. Now, there are some similarities between all the behaviors, it, but it depends on what happens. So whether they go to cover, you know, a pusher, for example, can still go from cover to cover. A defender can still go to cover to cover. So it's not like you've got these binary choices. It's about weighting the different choices throughout the behavior so that the AI provides something different, but also applies pressure to you as a player so that you're having to react to the AI. You know, right now, our current AI, you basically get the jump on them, and you can just take them all out. But in reality, what we want is we want you to react to the AI because they're pushing you and challenging you. And we want, you know, we want that challenge to be fair so that you feel like you've made the mistake when you eventually, or if you do, I get taken out. I want to get some of that God mode. Yeah. Uh, and then we have one more video showing the tactics yes. situation. Let's take a look at that. So this is just a short version where we, but again, it's the same uh, AI uh, that have been dropped in. And, and they, they roll the dice for, they don't always become defenders or always become pushers or strafers. Uh, it can be random every time, so the combat experience is different. Uh -huh. So you, and you might all be pushers and they might all be defenders, but the way it works is, if one of them rolls a defender, then the weight for them to roll another defender is lower. So essentially here, you can see here that uh, he's getting tagged a lot just because we want to show you the behavior themselves rather than you know, get taken out. So he's being a bit more aggressive than you probably would be able to. That's going to make uh, uh, the eventual eventual speed runs a lot harder because they're not just Goombas that do the same thing every time. You can't no. memorize the patterns. And the other thing you might have noticed as well is that we're starting to have traversal opportunities for the AI. So they're not always just on, yeah. on the base map. They can mantle over, you know, you, in fact, I'm not sure if we Crouch, this mantle, one. climb yeah, ladders. They can, they can jump over railings and, and, and push you or they can climb up onto things and shoot down on you. Uh, they can use ladders, they can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so we, we're putting a fair amount of work into AI traversal, so they, they sort of understand the environment and how to traverse over it other than just flat ground. Um, and of course, you know, on some of that, I think you saw some of that, he didn't get hit right away, some of the early shots missed and then they hit him, that's kind of what Rich was talking about earlier. Because, um, you know, it's, it, it, like Rich says, it's very easy to make you know, AI aim perfectly all the time because they know exactly where you are. Yeah. Uh, they've got all the numbers, um, but that's not any fun. So the fun is making them feel real, like that's you're playing against another real uh, player.